Yeah, hi everyone. Welcome to the first Demi Cloud user meeting. Uh, my name is Peter Bellman. I'm working at the Denby administration office and I have uh, the position of the cloud governance, which means that well, my, my main task is that I take care of the access issues to the cloud. <coughs> Um, but I also work closely together with administrators of the Denby Cloud in order to improve the cloud in different kind of aspects. So in this user meeting, we have three types of users or participants with three types of different questions. And the first user group here uh, maybe is completely new to the cloud. So they maybe want to know, okay, why should I actually use the cloud? Who is, who is using it already? And what kind of benefits do I have of, of using it? Um, the other user group um, maybe have already access to the cloud, but want to know what, what are the best practices. So what is the best way actually to, well, to, to use my software in the cloud? How, what, what is the best way to get my data to the cloud and maybe get the result back and the third user group so are developers. So these people actually build and, and run software in the cloud for research. Um, so in, 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 this, in, this, in this meeting, in the context of this meeting, I hope that we can answer those questions. And we will give you the chance to talk to the actual uh, cloud experts. And you can ask them whatever you want regarding it. Um, so, but before I dig deeper into, into Demi Cloud and cloud computing, let me first uh, explain you what, what, what Demi actually is. Um, so, Demi is a German network for bioinformatics infrastructure. It is a coordinated and uh, distributed infrastructure. Uh, it is funded by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, and its main purpose it, it was made for, for life sciences. And I think since 2017, Demi runs also the German Elixir node. So Elixir is, is quite similar to Demi, but operates more on a well on a European level. So it is some kind of intergovernmental organization that connects different um, life science resources and communities across Europe. So in Demi, we provide uh, first-class bioinformatics resources uh, and services. Um, we also offer training in Germany and, uh, and Europe through a wide range of, of courses and, and workshops. And we of course offer the Demi Cloud as a computational resource. So the network at the moment consists of 39 project partners. Uh, eight institutions are involved uh, sorry, 32 institutions are involved, and those 32 institutions uh, are organized in eight service centers, and each service center has its own, well, focus on a specific uh, research topic. So like RNA bioinformatics, human bioinformatics, plant bioinformatics, um, microbial bioinformatics, and also cloud computing services. Um, in 2016, we started to, well, to make the first buy hardware for the, for the Denby Cloud. And uh, at the end of, of the last re year, we actually went into, into production. Um, the Denby Cloud consists of five compute centers, uh, Bielefeld, Gießen, Heidelberg, Tübingen, and Freiburg. So it is a federated uh, cloud. And all those compute centers are using the same infrastructure as a service system, which we call OpenStack. And at the moment, we offer more than 15,000 cores and a 35 petabyte of uh, storage capacity. So even though we started at the end of 2017, we have a growing number of, uh, of users, developers, and uh, projects. So at the moment we have more than 250 uh, registered users and, and about 100 <coughs> projects. And among those projects are also 
science gateway projects like Galaxy or Phenomenal with again uh, hundreds and hundreds and, and uh, thousands of, of users that are actually using the Demby Cloud resources behind the scenes. Um, in our application workflow, we envisage that the PIs were a principal investigator uh, of the German institute or university uh, applies for the project, so he describes his project and the needed uh, resources. This project application is then reviewed by a scientific committee and checks if, it is, if the, the requested resources are appropriate for the, for the specific project. And after the approval, this project is created in the cloud portal and also the resources are allocated at one of the cloud sites. So, after the application is uh, approved, um, the PI is able to add anyone he wants to this, so any member he wants to add to, to this project. So it could be a student, it could be a postdoc, it could be another PI, it could be someone from the industry. For us, it, it doesn't matter. The only, uh, the only condition that we have is that the PI is responsible for any action in the cloud, for anything that happens in the cloud. So, but now, what is actually cloud computing? So, as described by, uh, or explained by uh, the developers of, the, of Microsoft's Azure Cloud, uh, cloud computing is the delivery of, well, of, of servers, of analytics, of software, of databases, or storage uh, over the internet. So everything else, so how these services actually operate, maybe somewhere down in, in the cellar of the universities in the hardware, this complexity is completely hidden from you. So you don't have to take care about it. Everything is managed for you. And it allows you just to focus on your research. Um, the basic building block of, of cloud computing and the cloud is a virtual machine. Uh, so I guess some of you are using um, software like VirtualBox. So VirtualBox allows you to well to start a Windows-based operating system on your Linux-based operating system, or the other way around. And when you start such a VM on your laptop, you you are so a VM, which is an emulation of, of, of an operating system. <coughs> You have to specify uh, the parameters for, for this virtual machine. So how many cores do you need? How much RAM do you need? What kind of operating system do you actually want to start? And the same is for the cloud. So you first have to create your blueprint. So you provide these kind of parameters using either the, the, the graphical user interface or using some kind of API. And once you create this blueprint, you send this blueprint to, to some kind of, well, some kind of API or graphical user interface, and the virtual machine is started in the cloud. So again, it doesn't matter to you how this machine is started, from what kind of hardware it is started. Uh, you just see once it is started, you are able to connect to it through protocols like the secure shell protocol. And best practices how well how you can start such a VM, what 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 is the best way to configure such a VM will be explained to you tomorrow during the uh, OpenStack uh, workshop. So, as I mentioned before, um, Demi Cloud is a federated cloud, and we have one central portal, which is also uh, uh, hosted in Bielefeld, and it acts as a central access point to the cloud. And we are collaborating with Elixir to offer you single sign-on, which means you just need one account <coughs> to access all those compute centers and uh, the, uh, the cloud portal, which makes it easier for you. Mm. <coughs> so, but still, why, well, why should you use the cloud, or in this case, the Demby cloud? So, one important point is that, that you can scale on demand. Right, so if your data grows, well, then just start a bigger virtual machine. If you notice that your service that maybe operates on multiple virtual machines need more virtual machines, 
Well, then you start more of them. So you can you can scale as you need. Um, the second point, well, you have root access to the virtual machine, so you can actually install well any software that you need for your uh, for your research. And it could be also any complex framework that maybe exists in a, in a cloud ecosystem. So any kind of big data processing engine or um, some kind of MapReduce technology. This is, uh, everything is possible to, to, to install in the cloud. Um, one thing that, that we are working on is to allow you fast access to reference data sets. So instead of fetching data from NCBI or EBI, uh, we want to provide a mirror for you for these kind of data sets, which allow you to, well, to work quite fast with this, uh, within your research. Um, and the last point is, um, if you're familiar with HPC, uh, you, you have no reservations or, or kind of well, queuing system. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we want to show you, um, explain to you what are the best practices. And one important point is containerization. So in this case, let's imagine that you want to install and, and, and start uh, three different well, software packages or tools um, which are represented by these, these gears. Um, Let's also imagine that the two of them depends on, well, the red gear depends on the system library A and the green one depends on system library B. So now what if <coughs> the blue gear, so the software that is represented by the blue gear needs a newer version of system library A and both versions cannot coexist on your, on your virtual machine. So what kind of options do you have? I mean, you could, you could of course run first the software which is represented by the red gear, right? and then once this tool is done, you, s you maybe update the system library and start the software which is represented by the blue one. But it makes things difficult. If it's not easy to do, and what if you need again the red gear, then you have again to, to, well, to remove the system library. So things get complicated. And there's a better way to achieve that. Instead, you could use um, containers. So containers means th th these are uh, lightweight virtualizations. And there are different technologies that, uh, well, th that um, are those, uh, or represent those containers, like Docker, Singularity, or Rocket. And the benefit of using those containers is that the system library that I showed you in my last right slide is actually part of the container. So you have now this, this problem that, that um, your tool or multiple tools depend on a, on a library or software that maybe conflicts with other uh, libraries. Mm. And this will be, and of course there, there, are, there, there are other benefits of using those containers. There are even communities that, that build bioinformatic uh, containers. So once you grasp how this works, uh, you will have directly hundreds of bioinformatic tools at your fingertips. And, well, how this, is, how this actually works um, will be shown to you by Jörg Greening uh, tomorrow. Mm. Another best practice point is uh, workflows. So again, let's imagine you, you want to, well, to run three software tools. But you don't want to do this interactively. You want to automate it as, as much as possible, right? Because maybe you need this this, this automation to this with different data sets. So you don't want to do this interactively. You want to automate it as, uh, as much as possible. But how you can well, connect those different software tools and how you can maybe specify what kind of um, requirements they have, uh, like resource requirements. Uh, for, for this, you, you can use a workflow engine. And one workflow <coughs> engine will be explained to you on Wednesday by Lucas. <coughs> and last point is, um, well, managing of, of multiple containers. So, 
let's imagine you, you have multiple containers. And let's also imagine you, you have started multiple VMs, so like you have 10 or 20 VMs started. So how would you now distribute those containers over those 10 or 20 VMs? So what, what is the best way to do this? You, you, again, you don't want to do this interactively. You, you want to automate it as, as much as possible. And one possible way is to use a technology developed by Google called Kubernetes. And <coughs> Kubernetes is a way to automate the deployment that allows you to easy scaling of your containers and also to manage those containers <coughs> lifecycle. And Google, for example, uses Kubernetes to, well, to start billions of containers in a week. Mm. Do you have questions in between? Yeah. Do you know how many Kubernetes clusters Google would be running? It's certainly more than one, or is it one global planet-wide? I'm not sure, but, but I think it is possible to run a federated Kubernetes. I heard about that. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, um, yeah, so there, there are many institutes uh, involved in this, in this Demi Cloud project. There are many, well, developers and, and, and administrators involved in this. And, yeah, so my thanks goes, goes to all those people. Um, a few things regarding the organization um, or the agenda. Um, so there will be a self-paid dinner today and I added a link to the agenda Google <coughs> Doc where you can uh, add your name if you're interested to join us uh, in the restaurant called Brauhaus. And <coughs> you can either go directly to, to this place or we can meet at uh, quarter to, uh, to seven in front of the SEBI tech building. Mm. We also want to organize the Birds of the Feather uh, session tomorrow. And the idea is that, well, I, I want to, to collect different topics that you might want to discuss. Right? And I would like to, to ask you that you add your name and, and maybe the topic that you're interested in to, to the Google Doc. So again, it is referenced by the agenda, in this, in this agenda document. And if you think that, okay, so you, you don't have your own topic, but you are interested in, in, some, in a topic that was proposed by someone else, just add your name to it so I know, okay, so how many, maybe you can, we can both distribute in multiple groups. Um, well, and today uh, there will be also chat with your admin um, session. So you will have the chance to, well, to, if you have already a project, in the cloud to <coughs> complain about anything that does not work or ask questions about something that you might want to know. Um, <coughs> okay, that's it. Thanks.